Originally, when we started studying Pegasus in 2016, uh, a target would have to click on a link sent via SMS in order to facilitate the infection of the phone. If you didn't click on the link, the phone wouldn't get infected and wouldn't be able to be monitored. But around 2017 or 2018, NSO Group appears to have released a major update to the Pegasus system, which allows governments to hack into phones with a so-called zero-click technique. The headlines have been filled today with news. A private Israeli company called NSO Group has been selling spyware to governments across the world and they have been using this to spy on their citizens, journalists and also even kings and presidents. This is the most powerful piece of spyware that has ever been developed and regular viewers of the channel will remember EncroChat's spyware was Cerberus. And this is even more powerful. It can turn your phone into a 24-hour surveillance device. It can copy your messages and even send and receive. It can harvest your photos and record your calls and even your screen. It can even film you through the phone camera, activate your mobile and record your conversations and can even pinpoint where you are, where you've been and who you've met. Pegasus is hacking software or spyware and that is developed, marketed and licensed to governments around the world by the Israeli company and has the capability to infect billions of iOS and Android devices with the spyware. The revelation of this for the Pegasus project group that I'll speak about in a minute has caused Apple stock market prices to tumble by 2.4% by lunchtime. This has highlighted fundamental problems that may exist in the software and the iOS's and Android devices. The Guardian newspaper today described that as a day one vulnerability or otherwise known as a day one error. So one of the ways that Pegasus will attack your phone is through what's called a zero day vulnerability. But they don't go into any more detail about what a day one error is or what that could mean for companies like Apple and the security of your phone. First, we'll start with Amnesty International. Headline reads, Pegasus project massive data leak reveals Israeli NSO groups spyware used to target activists, journalists and also political leaders. Authoritarian governments are using the Pegasus software created by Israel to target citizens and people that are trying to document events. They say that NSO groups have been used to facilitate human rights violations around the world on a massive scale. The Amnesty International calling for an investigation into the leak of 50,000 phone numbers of potential surveillance targets. Some of these are heads of state, activists and journalists and they revealed on their website some of these people as well. The Pegasus Project is a groundbreaking collaboration of more than 80 journalists from 17 media companies in 10 countries coordinated by Forbidden Stories which is a Paris-based media non-profit group that focuses on technical support from Amnesty International and they conducted cutting-edge forensic tests on mobile phones to identify traces of the Pegasus spyware. Agnes Calamard, the, sec the secretary of Amnesty International said, these revelations blow apart any claims by NSO that such attacks are rare and only used to tackle serious criminals and terrorists. The investigation at the centre of the NSO group's Pegasus spyware says it is installed on victims' phones and allows attackers complete access to the device's messages, emails, media, phones, cameras, contacts and calls. Similar to what they was doing with EncroChat, but it seems like it's even more sophisticated than Cerberus. Over the next week, media partners at Pegasus Project, that include The Guardian and Washington Post, will run a series of stories detailing how world leaders politicians, human rights activists and journalists have been selected as potential targets of the spyware. And Forbidden Stories and Media Partners identified political NSO clients in 11 countries. These include Azerbaijan, Hungary, India, Kazakhstan, Mexico, Morocco, Rwanda, Saudi Arabia, Togo and the United Arab Emirates. The NSO group not taken adequate action to stop the use of these tools for unlawful targeted surveillance of journalists. And despite the fact that they knew that this was a capability of the software, they have done nothing to stop governments from doing this. During the investigation, evidence has emerged that family members of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi 
was targeted by Pegasus in Istanbul on the 2nd of October 2018 by Saudi operatives, despite repeated denials from the NSO group in Israel. Amnesty's security lab established that Pegasus spyware was successfully installed in the phone of the journalist. Four days after his murder, his wife revealed this to journalists. In a statement, the NSO group responded to the Pegasus project's allegations, saying that the technology was not associated in any way with the heinous murder of Jamal Cash Huggy, and the company said that he previously investigated the claim immediately after the murder and these claims are being made without any validation. The investigation so far has identified 180 journalists in 20 countries that were selected for targeting by NSO software between 2016 and June 2021. Amnesty International has released the full technical details of the security lab's in-depth forensic investigations as part of the Pegasus project. The lab's morphology report documents the events of Pegasus spyware attacks since 2018 with details on the spyware's structure and these are more than 700 related domains. The NSO group firmly denies that the claims and say that many of them are uncorroborated theories and raise serious doubt that the reliability of the sources as well as the basis of the story. So to understand a little bit more about that, so what is a day zero error and what do they do? If you go to WikiLeaks, you can find this article on Vault 7, the CIA hacking tools that was revealed in a WikiLeaks back in 2017. This gave us an insight shortly after 2016 when they first started using this spyware of what was really the capabilities and what they was really using it for. WikiLeaks began a series of leaks on the US Central Intelligence Agency, otherwise known as the CIA that was codenamed Vault 7. It was the largest ever publication of confidential documents on the agency. The first was a full series called Year Zero and compromises 8,700 documents and files from isolated high security network situated inside the CIA in Langley, Virginia. It follows an introductory disclosure last month of the CIA targeting French political parties and candidates in the run-up to the 2012 election. Recently, the CIA lost control of the majority of its hacking arsenal and these include malware, viruses, trojans, weaponized zero day exploits. So this is what they have actually found. So this is something that was wrong with the system from the day that it was created. So if this is accurate and true, this would mean the iPhone is not as secure as what they've been making out. And this is why people have been panicking on the stock market. The collection amounts to what is hundreds of millions of lines of code processing the entire hack capacity of the CIA. The archive appears to have been circulated among US government hackers and contractors in an unorthodox authorized manner. So this means that you have to look at it like this. There's good hackers and there's bad hackers. There's people that find faults with systems and then of course they correct them. There's government hackers that are trying to find the faults but what's happened they're alleging is that they've found these faults and then they've not told the companies about them. So for example, if they found a backdoor or a zero day error in the iPhone, then suddenly they just keep that information to themselves. And now nobody's any of the wiser because nobody would have found it unless the hacker reveals it. Julian Assange later goes on to say in that article, comparisons can be drawn between the uncontrolled proliferation of such weapons that results in the inability to contain them and combine and sell them to the highest market. So for example, it needs to be treated treated like a serious weapon of war because the same way a nuclear weapon could wipe people out to take their data this could give the enemy the information they need to maybe launch propaganda or take down someone's infrastructure that protects them in their country for example it goes on to say there was an analysis of cia malware that targets iphones androids and smart tvs the hacking tools were built by the Engineering Development Group, a software development group with Center for Cyber Intelligence, a department belonging to the CIA, and the EDG is responsible for the development, testing and operational support of all backdoors, exploits, malicious payloads, trojans, viruses and other kinds of malware used by the CIA in covert operations worldwide. The increasing sophistication of software techniques has drawn comparisons with George Orwell's 1984 
and a weeping angel developed by the CIA, which infests your TV, transferring them into covert microphones, and it is the most problematic realisation. The Samsung TV was developed in cooperation with the United Kingdom's MI5, after the infestation of the weeping angel that places the target TV into fake mode, so the owner believes the TV is off when it is really on, and fake mode the TV operates the bug, recording conversations in the room and sending them over the internet to a covert CIA server. As of 2014, the CIA has been looking to infect the vehicle control systems used by modern cars and trucks as well. So this is really mind-blowing stuff and this is things that was released by WikiLeaks. This isn't theory, this isn't conspiracy, this is actual factual information that was released about the severity of how they worked to make sure that people could be monitored at all times. It goes on to say that the CIA's malware can target Windows, OS X, Linux and even routers. And it has a substantial effort to control and infect Microsoft users with its malware. Everybody knew that Microsoft was the worst of the bunch. The CIA hoarded vulnerabilities, zero days. In the wake of Edward Snowden's leaks of the NSA, the US technology company industry secured a commitment form from the Obama administration that the executives would disclose on the ongoing basis rather than hoard serious vulnerabilities, exploits, bugs or zero days to Apple, Microsoft, Google and UK based manufacturers. Serious vulnerabilities were not disclosed to the manufacturers. And the only way they could find out about them was through rumours. So this means that them good hackers that work apparently for the CIA, they were still getting the information to find the problems and then there wasn't fixing them. So when they need to go into your back door or your phone, they can. There was a lot of lobbying by technology companies in the US to stop them sharing all this data and basically giving their company, their customers zero privacy. As an example, the CIA malware revealed in year zero was able to penetrate, infect, and control an Android device and iPhone software that runs on presidential Twitter accounts. The CIA attacked this software by using undisclosed vulnerability zero date attacks possessed by the CIA, but if the CIA can hack your phone, then so can everybody else that has obtained or discovered the, the vulnerability. As long as the CIA keeps these vulnerabilities concealed from Apple and Google who make the phones, they will never be fixed and the phones will remain hackable. So this is seriously mind-blowing stuff to be honest. So basically they're saying that none of this stuff was as secure as we thought. Your WhatsApp, your Signal, absolutely nothing. If they want to get into it because of these zero days and these initial errors that these companies have still not found, they can't do anything unless the government tells them what the problem is. We're definitely going to keep following this story. There's going to be a lot of news coming from this story. And I'll definitely keep you updated in the coming days. Please don't forget to follow us online as well. And if this video gets taken down, you can find it on our website at scarcitystudios.com. Peace. Yeah, I mean, the, the big thing that's changed um, since I was uh, in, 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 in 2013 is now it's mobile first everything. Um, mobile was still a, a big deal, right? Um, and the intelligence community was very much grappling uh, to, to get its hands around it and to deal with it. Um, but now people are much less likely to use a laptop than use a desktop than, than use, you know, God, any kind of wired phone um, than they are to use a smartphone.